Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I have a mixed emotion this morning because way back 1997 when I entered in Bible school and during those time it was really a a time wherein I I really learning and uh, desiring to know more about God and there are few people that I I for a few times I met and Pastor Joel is the one that I, n I will never forget uh, I got saved when I was 13 and I enrolled in Bible school when I was 16 I was very cute that time <laughs> and uh, during those time uh, of course everybody every one of us are thinking if we are really saved and uh, one of the evidence of our salvation is that it's hard to serve God and to love souls. That's a very evidence that we should have. It's hard to share the gospel. That's why the lesson this morning is really a challenge and encouragement to me that uh, I really understand and I cannot accept that God already picked people to be saved and some are not. And uh, it was that time when Pastor Joel preaches about the gospel. And the reason why I will never forget him is the way he described the cross. That when he preaches about the gospel, he, he, he puts you in the scene that you see how Jesus was crucified. And it, it was really my joy to speak in evangelistic meeting. And I used to use that illustration. And sometimes I cried just simply explaining the gospel. And until today, I never, I never stopped sharing the gospel. And the more I really wanted to share it, and it was really a joy of every Christian. And it caused celebration in heaven because of one soul that repented. Why should we stop doing that? And, uh, and one more thing, he is one of the, of course, famous in the Philippines. <laughs> uh, I, I used to hear his name in many places. Saiko Nasa, he was in already in Cambodia, but uh, he used to be uh, mentioned in many places. But uh, <laughs> mm, part, partly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sometimes we we uh, junior or say we just started a uh, ministry pastor, young pastors used to observe and used to think what we should be believing and of course the content and the motive and the grounds of our preaching should be coming from the real principle of the word of God and my, my principles are I just when I eat chicken I just throw the bone and eat the meat and we cannot deny that there are some that really teach us uh, controversial and some are not really scriptural but uh, I'm, I'm craving for that teaching because I will fight for what is right. I will preach even other people hate me because that is the truth. And besides, there are no preachers in the Bible who, who will not be hated by many because of preaching the truth. And I would like to encourage and to tell you, church, that you are very blessed to have Pastor Joel. I, 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 I used not to say flattering words, but it's true. Uh, we... I really wanted to have a pastor that teaches me and correct me if necessary, especially in doctrines. Now, I would like to speak, uh, I do not know, but I've been praying last night. As a pastor, I used to preach many, many times. I was, pre I was praying to God, what should I teach? It's, and I think it's very timely because this morning we talk about the, the Calvinism and one of the strength of the Calvinism that they said is the grace of God. And they are very particular in the doctrine of grace. That if really a person understands grace, you ought to be more faithful. You ought to be more thankful. You ought to be doing uh, good things because you are saved. And uh, I, I, do not talk, I don't want to talk about their teaching. But uh, I believe the Lord impressed to my heart about the grace of God. And this morning also, it was being read. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, may I request everyone to stand, please. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 10. So I hope by the grace of God, this would be able to be explained properly and give light to our faith. Let us read it all together. Supposedly, we'll be going to read 1 to 10, but since we read this morning, let us read only verse number 10. Okay, ready now? All together, read. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we praise and thank you for this wonderful opportunity, O oh God, to be with the brethren here, uh, that we are able to worship you, O oh God, and you have given me the opportunity to be the channel of your blessing. I pray, O oh God, you be the one to work in our midst, especially to your servant, O oh God. Without you, I cannot do anything that I might be able to exclaim, explain the scriptures. But with your help, O oh God, you give us understanding. And may these things that we are going to learn this morning would be encourage us, strengthen, strengthen us, O oh God, uh, enlighten us. And Lord, I pray that your, your name be glorified in our midst, you God, and your word only would be preached. Guide us, O God, we pray all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Please be seated now. You know what? You, we used to say and we used to hear the word grace. And most of the people, when you ask, How are you? And they said, Oh, I'm okay by the grace of God. And some people says also, Oh, how are you today? Why you are not able to come to church? And they said, by the grace of God, I'm okay. But I wonder why today many people claim to have that grace, yet the evidence on their lives is not what the grace of God does to those people who live by grace. I do not really believe and I do not really understand that some people can live by grace because they have money. And sometimes they have people. And some are prominent. Some can do many things and can travel many places. But I do believe grace is more than what we understand. And if we really understand, just like Apostle Paul, he was able to explain. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we will see there that he started the chapter by telling what is gospel all about. How Jesus given to us undeserving ungrateful people given to us his life for us and he gave all the sacrifices and not only that it was been even shown to us that Jesus is not only uh, came to die but he rose again and he showed to us the, the reality of the resurrection and he explained in the last chapter because we know the first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 that shows that our labor is not in vain. Why we? it's not in vain? Because we believe that it's not only in this life, we, our, in this, this present life will last our lives, but even in eternity, that whatever we do today, according to His standards, would be rewarded in heaven. There was a, a great missionary that said, if serving the king in England is a privilege. Why would serving the king of kings is a sacrifice? We would rather say serving the Lord is a privilege. You know, I have given the opportunity just like, and unlike many foreign missionaries, uh, they used to, they, they can go to many churches asking if they can share the burden and preach the word of God. But because they were foreign missionary, but unlike to us, a local missionary, I'm, I'm pastoring a very small congregation. We don't even have a place that we own a lot, not, not even a building. But you know what? The great privilege that I, I believe in my life is in, in a very special way. I believe the grace of God would work that we could be a blessing also to the other churches. And I grabbed this opportunity and I prayed when I uh, they, they used to see that we are traveling from Thailand. Now I'm here in Cambodia and then next to Vietnam. But it is my, I told to my church, I am not living for pleasure. I am living because I wanted to see the work in many places and to be challenged. And if God permits, I would like to share the gospel. And I would like to share also the greatness of the grace of God. And to be here is such a privilege. 
Salamat po dahil kung hindi ho ako papayagan ng inyong pastor na magsalita knowing the greatest preachers here. I mean, it is great because whenever we serve the Lord, it is great thing. Uh, but I mean, in comparison with what you know, probably having a pastor like him, it, it is, I felt very uh, ignorant sometimes. But uh, we praise the Lord, the grace of God do not restrain us to know more things about. But brethren, what is the grace of God in your life? Don't get it wrong. Minsan kasi inaabuso natin yung grasya ng Diyos eh. You know, people today going to backslide, people today not serving the Lord, not because we are not having many things, but we have a lot of things. Because of the great things and the greatness and the graciousness of God, we tend to backslide the more. Nung araw bago ka kumain, nagpipray ka muna. Alam niyo po sa amin, I used to train to eat in the evening. I, I, I have my mother, my, I have only my mother because my father died when I was four years old. And I used to grow up in the streets. Nakikipagsuntukan ako, nakikipag, lahat na yata, maliban na lang sa mga sobrang bawal talaga. But one thing that I remember, my mother used to bring me to the church. We walked three kilometers every every Sunday and every Wednesday and I ask myself why I am doing this, why we are doing this. My, my mother is not rich but he rich in faith. And he brought me to church, now I am his pastor. And I praise the Lord because all my family are saved. And we are, we are all serving the Lord. Uh, uh, my, 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 my mother used to just, I what do we call that? Naglalaba lang. He just doing the laundry. And uh, because during his ta her time, uh, there, there is no, only few people had a formal education. We don't even have an inheritance that we could have to part with the family. But you know what? We are trained to eat only in the evening. That's why until today, my stomach doesn't want breakfast. Yes, I used to eat only in the evening, but this morning, sa sabi ni Pastor, almusal tayo, sa gusto po, Pastor. Pero sa totoo, hindi ako sanay dyan eh. But one thing that I know, my mother teaches me the importance of coming to church. Some people say today, ah, okay lang na hindi naman pumunta sa simbahan because some people, when you visit them, especially my our members, they will told me, ah, Pastor, even I do not come to church, I never forget God. That has a lame excuse. Because before, before Jesus Christ did the plan of salvation and He died on the cross, what He did, He started the church. He will not start anything which is less important. It is important for us to go to church because when we are in the church, we are offering ourselves. Before our money, it is ourselves, our time, our priorities. And the grace of God is doing that. But allow me to start. I could not start when I'm making a story. Who? Grace. When we say grace, this is the one of the most special words that belongs only to the Christian. Unbelievers do not understand that. There are so many things we do not see or realize in our Christian life. From our birth up to our death, God has been working and guiding us. Kaya po dapat talaga ang Krisyano, kilala niya at alam niya na ang Panginoon ay laging nandyan para sa atin. There was a saying, God without man is still a God, but man without God is nothing. And it is very true. Grace is the merciful kindness by which God, exerting His holy influence upon souls, turns them to Christ, keeps, strengthens, increases them in the Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to the exercise of the Christian virtues. Sabi po nila, lalo na sa Philippines, madaling maging Kristiyano pero mahirap magpaka-Krisyano. Because what we are is being shown the way we live. Christianity is not a word to say but a life to share. Let us share the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. And dali po kasi maging, it's easy to become a Christian when you are in the church. I tell you, wearing neckties, singing godly songs, smiling to each other is easy when you are in the church. But your life is defined when you are alone. And most importantly, who you are in the sight of the Lord. I wonder today, I've been around in many places. You know, sometimes it's really hard to understand when you are doing... Uh, I, I've been talking to some pastors. Uh, I, I do not believe in luck, pastor. Uh, they, 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 they are lucky. Mamalasin tayo. 
Pero sometimes it's incomprehensible to us why people have this and that. And sometimes your effort is so much and some are very little but sometimes parang mas lamang sila sa blessing. You know what? Uh, I praise and thank the Lord. One of the greatest blessings that I had is my wife. Because when I was praying for a wife, I've been praying because I am confused kung sino sa kanila. Kasi may nagturo sa akin eh. They told me, they told me collect and collect then select. I just I'm collecting friends, not relationship. That's why our story goes like this. Uh, I've been praying, I've been considering many because I used to admire the pastor of my pastor. Uh, I, I mean, I, I used to admire the daughter of my pastor. He's, she's really a great person. Uh, I really li la like musicians and she's a soloist and everything and like that. But during the time that the Lord has been leading me and helping me to see the right person, uh, I just let go of my standards and my preferences. And I told to God, Lord, it's not what I want, but help me to see the right person. Because I'm turning 31 that time. I'm preaching ng pastor ko, pag wala kang trabaho, huwag kang maliligaw. I'm a full-time worker having received 250 pesos a week. How can I court someone? I don't even have money for my gasoline. But by faith and by grace. <laughs> uh, I talked to my pastor. Pastor, I think it's about time. Uh, I have my 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 daughter in the faith if I may say so kasi maraming galit din din dyan eh mga, mga Calvinists ayaw nila ng ganong term that's what well, anyway change topic <laughs> then we I, I told to my pastor I asked the permission of the pastor by the way those singles here your pastor should know don't keep it secret yan ang nagiging problema yung mga pasikre-sikreto natin eh my pastor, I told to my pastor, Pastor, I'm going to court my wife Jenna. And I wanted, I want it to be surprised because we are seven years best friend. And I really not considered her as a partner because she is my friend. And I realized you cannot love someone whom you do not know. Eh, sino ba yung mas kilala mo? Di siyempre yung kaibigan mo. And that is the... <laughs> That's the reason of loving someone. You know the person. Sometimes you are surprised. Oh, ganyan ka pala, kaya ayaw mo na. Pero salamat sa point. Then what I did is I made her sat down in the front. I told her I'm going to leave to preach to another churches. Another church, I mean. Then she was asked by the usher to sat down in the front. And I already bought many flowers. I think 200 roses. And every member just like you. I The usher gave and those flowers and then came to her and tell, told her, congratulations, congratulations. And the pianist, I already instruct her, him that you play, this is the day. And on the last of the line, I was there singing, this is the day that the Lord has made. Pastor naman, moment ko to eh. Wag muna. Mamaya tayo mag-usap pag tayo Ay, nako, parang ayaw ko na tuloy-tuloy. <laughs> but you know, one thing that really God has been doing, it's a testimony that marks in the hearts of the young people in our church. That when you love someone and you propose to someone, it's a blessing and it glorifies the Lord. And I told her for the first time, Jenna, I, I, because she's been asking me for many years, why you are bringing me home? Why we are sometimes we eat in a special uh, restaurant? What, what is the meaning of this? No, like, oh, don't ask me. She is forcing me. <laughs> <laughs> and I told her one time, what do you want? You're going, I'm going to tell you the reason because you're asking me? Or you want me to, say the reason, to tell the reason because it comes from my heart? And she told me, I'll wait. <laughs> and that is the moment. And I told her, Jenna, in the front of people, and in the front of the church and in the sight of the Lord, I would like to tell you that I love you so much. Nakaka-relate kasi ang daming young people eh. I would like to make this testimony. But you know what? Akala niya tapos na. 
Afterwards, she, she, she stood up because I have the bouquet handed to her. And then she told, she's about to leave. She goes, oops, oops, stay there. And I knelt down, having the ring in my pocket. I bought it second hand. I bought a silver eh. And I told her, Jenna, I love you. And will you marry me? I, I never asked her if she loves me too. I, I knew it already. I have, listen to me, young man. I have 10 points to know if the woman loves you. It's very effective. We can sit over the copy later. It never failed. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Some, some preach. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll be here after Tuesday only, okay? Okay, uh, let, me, let me just continue. And then... The lo you know what one thing that the, 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 the reason why I said is she's really a blessing because she is our treasurer that time as a preacher of our church and a full time worker I'm receiving 500 pesos a week who among you here that can be able to accept the proposal in a wedding that you know the person only had 500 pesos a week how do we convert that in dollar ten dollars I have my gasoline every day as a full-time worker, and I don't really have money. But she said, I love you too. And I praise and thank the Lord. My tummy is not like this before. But the Lord sustained the needs. And you know what? Today, I told to my wife. My, my wife, I, I, was, I, I shared to Pastor Joel, uh, in our church, we, we only have Mostly of us are young people because when the pastor is young, sometimes. But you know what? The, 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 the problem is when I saw them, I'm so happy. But when we eat in the kitchen, I'm crying because most of the time we don't have much food in our table. But you know, I've been praying to God that Lord help this church to sustain more. We operate in our church today only for $300 a month. I'm only receiving $20 a week. I have two children, uh, two girls. And today, I praise the Lord, my daughter was able to graduate kinder. <laughs> and <laughs> probably... <laughs> our journey to, a, a journey to a mile is started with a single step. You know, at least she graduated already. But I know that ahead, ahead of time, I, I, ahead of our lives, there's a lot of challenges. But you know, I've been praying to God. It's not about having you having money, but you are doing and glorifying the Lord. It really matters. You know, my wife was earning, uh, when, the moment we started the ministry, uh, she is working in one of motorcycle companies. She is earning 10,000 pesos a, a month, and she is giving 7,000 pesos a month to our church. And you know what? I was blessed to have a wife like that. She's not even changed her cell phone. Uh, even it's very low tech. And you know, she's really, she's a very, ano eh, yung, uh, hindi po mahirap i-maintain. Uh, low maintenance. Oh, my wife was a blessing to me. And today, she is preaching right now. I ah, know. <laughs> I have a preacher there. But uh, you know what? The blessing, the blessing in the ministry when you see your family serving the Lord. Oh, let me just continue on. That's part of my testimony only. But let's understand grace. But uh, let, uh, may, may these things would help us. When we say about God's grace, it is simply means unmerited favor. Something that you do not deserve. Hey, listen. If God would give to us what we deserve, we are all dead right now. What we deserve is death. But God gave us life. And in this present life, He, gave, he can give us a life that is abundant. You know what? To be abundant is not having money, but to be contented on what you have. You know, hindi mo pwedeng, our, our desire would never stop. But the Lord should be glorified. If God base our blessings on our faithfulness, for sure we are not having anything we have right now. 
who, who, uh, who would have thought that I just receiving 1,000 pesos a week, having 4,000 a month, could travel like this? Kaya akala nila, grabe naman to, pakain-kain na lang. They eat in a fine restaurant. Kung pwede ko lang ilagay yung sponsored by this and sponsored by that. But praise and thank the Lord, it is the grace of God. God is not only good, but He is gracious. God's grace is God giving to us His utmost, His most precious Son. God gives, God the Son gives to us His precious blood and life. And God the Holy Spirit gives to us His precious time and presence for us. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand the Word of God. You know what? Sometimes I use... I used to know that, that a real person who knows the word of God would not be proud of himself. He is humble. I mean, there's nothing wrong to fight for the truth. But to be humble is different. It's easy to say, by the grace of God, praise God, but your heart determines by the Lord if it is really humble. And that, I that is. Uh, allow me just to cite some points Number one, I am. We are saved by God's grace. Ephesians two eight. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is the gift of God. We are sure by grace. Romans five two. By whom also we have access by faith into His grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We are secure by God's grace. Romans three twenty four. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We are strengthened by grace. Second Corinthians 12, 9, And He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weaknesses. We are supplied by grace. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4, 6, we are satisfied by grace. Ephesians 2, 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And we are surprised by grace. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 8 to 10, and, and last of all we have seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not me to be called an apostle, because I am persecuted the grace that the church of God, but the grace of God, but by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Who is Apostle Paul anyway? If we will ask about his citizenship, he is Roman. If he will be asked of about his riches, probably he has a lot of properties. If he would be asked of about his position, he's one of the Sanhedrin. He was a very intelligent person. And we, if he would be asked about, about being an accomplishment in the ministry, he had said many mission work. He, he had done many things. If he, if he would be asked about his, his ability to understand many things, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he said, I have understood all miseries. And I have the gifts. But he has a lot of... He, he, he even have more gifts than all the apostles. If we talk about suffering, he suffered more. If, if we talk about all the adjustment that he did, he did everything. If we talk about poverty, hunger, and, and persecution, he has a lot of more. If we talk about the love that gave to him by the church, I have love and I have more and abound. But listen, Apostle Paul understand grace. From his salvation up to his death, he has been faithful. He even said that I am now ready to be offered. And the time of his departure is at hand. When we say I am ready to, and we say, we say about departure, that means it is a, a naval expedition term that the anchor must be. Kunin uh, yung anchor, we are about to leave. When we use that in the army, it is used as hold the tent, the battle is over, we, we win the war. That means he completed the purpose of the Lord. But listen to me, brethren. It's not because you're a pastor. It's not because you're a preacher. Be, but even you are just a simple member. God is a purpose for your life. You have to finish what God was been doing to your life and been faithful to what you are doing in the ministry. And I, you know what? I was talking to my daughter. 
and afterwards I talked to my wife and my wife told me daddy I heard Sophia is praying and I told her what did she say she said Jesus I'm about to sleep now but I want tomorrow when I wake up I want my daddy You know what I've been crying, crying this morning, thinking I've been a, a miles away from my children. If I'm not doing the will of God, this trip is in vain. Bakit ako nandito? That's why I'm praying to God, Lord, if you give me the opportunity to, to encourage brethren, Lord, please help me. Because wherever you are, you should glorify the Lord. And very simple things that you do. You might be teaching to children. You might be going to the villages or even inviting your your co-worker and you, your office mate your classmates you can glorify the lord and this church should understand that the grace been working just like the same of what the grace of god work in the lives of apostle paul let's talk about the works of grace point number two, the works of grace number one, knowing god's grace makes us grateful He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. We've been talking with Pastor Joel about stewardship. You know, what, whatever you have and whatever you can achieve, it's not because you are good, but because God is gracious. You know what? When I was a full-time worker, I have the courage to get my first motorbike. Yung Rusi na Ramjet. This that is a different one because it is a Rusi Ramjet Italy. You know why? Because the flarings was broken and tinali ko yung tapalodo tinali ko ulit yung tambucho na tanggal sa tunil yung wala umpang pagawa itinali ko pa rin. Kaya yun ano yun Italy. <laughs> you know what? I wonder here in in Cambodia, you have a good bike. But in our in the Philippines we have a very low quality bikes. Dito puro Honda. Oh, nagkaroon po ako ng sasakyan yung Toyota Light Ace Adventure. Toyota Light wala hong adventure na Toyota sa amin kaya lang pag sumakay ka doon maghanda ka na ng adventure. <laughs> Kasi minsan liniliko mo sa kaliwa ayaw. Minsan umuusok, tumakbo kaming pamilya, tayo sasabog, sasabog. <laughs> na, na-realize ko yung mga computer box lang yung sumasabog, hindi pala yung mga... But you know what? Even I have a broken motorbike and a broken car, I bring visitors using those. There are so many, uh, There was one time that I, I, I invited a visitor, uh, at least kasing taba siguro ni... <laughs> Ramakamali <laughs> ako dito hindi ako dito. <laughs> May magpapakapi pa naman sa akin baka i-cancel. <laughs> o sige, wag na lang ako magsabi. <laughs> uh, there are three, uh, I invited three person that I wanted I, I told them let's go to church and they agree with me and I pick them up. I was just using that motorbike and three plus me four in that a be, in that ramjet bike and you know yung yung puwet ko nakasabit na lang eh. Tuwing nalulubak, kumakati talaga. <laughs> and we traveled at least 14 kilometers to bring them and went back. But you know, it's, it might not good motorbike, but it brings souls to the church. You might be having good car and a good house, or you, have, you might have money more than me, but listen to me. The only investment that we can bring in eternity is the money that we spend for the glory of the Lord. Henry C. today uh, already died. She is having 1.3 trillion pesos. But not even a single centavo he can bring to heaven. If he will go to heaven. But if you invest even... Uh, you know what? God is not interested about your money. God is interested on your faith. In Hebrews 11, says, 6 says, For without faith... It is impossible to please God. Kaya lang, you don't need much faith when you give one dollar. Where's my one dollar? This is only money that I have. 
I was about, <laughs> I want to give on the offering. I was waiting. But you know what? If you have $1,000 and you just give $1, you don't need faith anymore. It's just a very small amount. When you give 50, it might, uh, it's, maybe it's a larger amount, but it doesn't require so much faith. But the Bible says without faith in everything that you do, that's why even you have money, the Bible says that the parable of the, the woman with the two mites, she gave her all. And you know what, brothers and sisters, coming to church sometimes a problem in the Philippines and probably in many places in the world, that, that the church is just like a social life. You just came and you go home and came and you go home. And where is the faith? The faith there when you apply the things that you learn from the word of God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. When I was about to go here to my trip, you know what, being a family man, it's not easy to have money. Especially when you went to a trip like this. Instead of buying a plane ticket, you might probably buying something that your daughters and your wife needs. But you know what? I've been praying to God. It was canceled. I already contacted Pastor January. But I never had a chance to buy a ticket because I have no budget. And I pray to God, Lord, help me if somebody could lend me or have some you know, credit card so that I could come. And the Lord, the Lord allowed me to find someone. You know what? Sometimes I never insist God of what I want. But when it is God's will, God will work upon it. And I, I believe the Lord was glorified when we believed by faith. Oh, there was a person here in our, in our place uh, near, near to us. He lived by, by feet. He lived by feet because he never had a bike. He walked. He lived by feet. He just walked. And I told her, let's pray for a bike. And the Lord gave him a motorcycle now with a sidecar. You know what? It is very important we live by faith. But listen, whatever you have is the right thing that you should have as the grace of God give you. Whatever you do not need, God will never give. That's why whatever you have today, we should be thankful. Christians should be grateful to God. Are you complaining this morning? Are you having so, you know what sometimes alam na ng Diyos ang kailangan mo eh. Yung ang pay, ang problema lang, we are not deserving of it and it's not due time for us to have it. But we ought to live by faith and thank the Lord always. Don't don't complain. One pastor said, don't reclaim. Ano ba yun? Reklamo. Reclaim. It's a complaint. There was one time that somebody, that somebody expounded uh, James 4.14. Life is like a vapor. You know, the boat, it's vapor. Sorry, go on. Delicado tayo dyan. That's in not only wrong exposition, but wrong grammar. But anyway, we should be thankful to God. Mga kapatid, yun lang. Let us thank the Lord every single day. Life is short and we have a great work to do. We have a great God to serve. Why should we live in regrets and complaints? Let us just thank the Lord and we can glorify God every day. Uh, there was a, one of the economists and uh, he was a business uh, expert. He said, find a job that you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. When you are loving what you are doing, you're not working, you're enjoying if you are, you know, don't think that coming to church is a burden. It's our joy. I always saying this, pumun, well, saan mo makikita yung mga isudyante? Sa paaralan. Saan mo makikita yung magiinom? Sa inuman. Yung nagsasabong. Sa sabungan. Pero yung kristyano saan? Sa simbahan. It is an evidence and proof that we are really a Christian. Kristyano ka, bihira ka magsimba. You're not proving that you're really a real Christian, but we are to be grateful. Number two, not only knowing God's grace makes us grateful, but also understanding God's grace makes us faithful. But by the grace of God, would you mind showing the verse, please? But by the grace of God, I am what I am. That is grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. And what Apostle Paul did, and 
but I labored more abundantly. Why you? Uh, there, there are some that I heard. I was a former choir member. I was a former full-time worker. I was a former. Wh why a former? Wh wh why you, you stop? Did the grace of God stop in your life? If you understand grace, if we understand grace, the more we will be faithful to God. Uh, we are in a comfortable situation in our mission work. We are. I've been praying to God kasi may narinig ako ng pastor sabi niya bakit yung mga baptist gusto lagi yung simbahan nasa sulok yung dulo ng kalsada pag sira na yung kalsada nandun na yung baptist church tapos naghahanap pa na yung simba, bahay na luma at may multo para mura ang renta and it, it, it was sounding on my ears and I told to God Lord if you would give me a place that we could worship I want it in the place where the people just pass by the, the, the cars and the buses and the Lord gave us a very good place and we have a paper there we are, we are able to have that place uh, avail that place for 7,000 pesos oh, but the good thing our allowance only is 2,000 pesos a month that's why my wife I, I computed the income of my wife mommy you should give this buti na lang obedience si mommy <laughs> sabi ko sa kanya mommy Di naman ako nag, na, namimilit, pero alalahanin mo lang, I am your spiritual father, and I'm the man, and I'm the pastor. <laughs> and she told me, yes. Okay, praise the Lord for my wife. But you know what? We are able to survive, and we are able to support even missionaries. We are able to help. But suddenly, there a problem came, and I believe another milestone for us to achieve in our faith. Then, the the owner of the house forced us to vacate the place. But the problem in our place is an industrial area and there has many universities. And when, when we look for a place, another place, we only have, we found only, we can avail the place for 15,000. And that's the only offering that we had. Ano hindi ka nagagasas ng iba pa? And there, the other is somewhat, some, uh, what uh, 30 to 40,000 then we've been praying for 3 months pastor and then alam nyo ang hirap kasi madali kasi mag comment kapag wala ka dun eh hindi kaya niyan by faith you don't understand they gave us deadline October 1 you should not be here and the problem with us we just operate not to have money but even in mission when we have the money we give the mission we give and we give uh, actually last time I checked before I left, we only have the balance in general fund 1,500 pesos. In our mission, we have 4,000, but we never touch the mission fund. And I never ask even a single centavo from the church for this travel. But you know what? What I want to share is the Lord was being faithful, and then He showed us, and He allowed us to, to rent a lot, 600 meters lot. Until today, Pastor, we never paid any single centavo. Because the owner said, J-I-L. J-I-L yun, hindi baptist. <laughs> the owner said, Pastor, you're asking me to pay the rental? You don't even finish your building? I said, oh, you have a point there. <laughs> I told her. But you know what? When we started to have the place October 1, immediately we transferred to the place. And we just have a small room there we could stay. And for two months, we worship outside under Nambangu tree. For two months. It's not easy. Hey, yung maganda na building, hindi pa simbahan eh. Hey, how much more we are worshiping in the outside. And sometimes, you know, when, when, when I know that it's, a, it's about to begin to rain, I shorten the message. Salamat na lang, walang ulan dito. Okay lang, kasi maka mga tree pa tayo. <laughs> okay, let's close in prayer. <laughs> but you know what? The good thing is, you know what? That was the time that I really appreciate our members. You, you, uh, the place where we just put the, uh, the, the chairs is uh, coming from the gra uh, for, from the yung yung bang mga lupa na tinambak so maraming mga langgam 
Then they just sit down and sometimes I was looking at them and they are. <laughs> and then ako rin, alam nyo ba? Ang Panginoon na yung matapang. <laughs> But you know what? For two months. And lumaki lalo yung pananampalataya namin dahil Lord, sabi ko, sana po wag uulan. And the Lord, sometimes after I preach, saka uulan ng malakas. That was past October up to December. Can you imagine that? October to November, I mean. But you know what? One thing that's really exciting is we only have 17,000 pesos. Less than 400 dollars. We are about to build a building with 400 dollars. It's not easy to, you know, whenever I use the mathematics, oh, this is impossible. What I bought is a, three, a GI pipe, only a tube, a metal tube, then eight of them, eight of it, and then I bought a trusses and then some hollow blocks. I maximize 17,000. And so I go, Lord, I will going to build this by your grace. You know what? Today, if you are friends in my in Facebook, you will see that we have now the building. We spent three hundred thousand by the grace of God. There was one person, Pastor. I never knew knew him, and I never met him. I never talked to him. Sending me one hundred thousand worth of materials, construction materials, to put on our building, and I see the more the grace of God. Today, my only fear is. Our church doesn't have doors and windows covered, or it's not finished yet. Uh, sometimes when we are leaving the church, uh, by the way, hindi ko matawag yung asawa ko na may bahay. I used to call her my 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 kwarto, kasi wala kami ng bahay. Sabi ko siya po yung my kwarto ko. So my wife Jenna used to smile, but uh, there was one time we are we are. I, uh, we used to drive a bike with my daughter Sophia, picking her on the school and going back. And I used to admire houses. And Daddy, ang ganda ng bahay. Diyan na lang tayo tumira. Daddy, nung pasok ko, anak, may nakatira dyan. Daddy, yun talaga. Gustong gusto ko, may garden pasok ko. Anak, may nakatira dyan. Daddy, yun. Sabi ko, anak, mayroon din dyan. Eh, saan tayo titira talaga? Sabi ko, anak, someday. At saka, sa langit, may mansion tayo. Ayaw ko sa langit. Niya, dito muna. Uh, who, sino yung tatay na hindi nagangat? If, if only I'm just alone. If only I don't have family. I can bear anything. But everybody is dreaming for something that can be give to his family. But you know what? The grace of God sustained. There was one time I just woke up in the evening. It was 3 a.m. I was crying. I never knew why. I just crying. At least 10 to 15 minutes, I was crying. Then when I stop, I I talk to God, Lord. You know, sometimes ah, uh, the pastor needed to understand everybody, but she was never understood by the members. You know what? The pastor needs encouragement too. But the grace of God was there. Kapatid, ang taong na bubuhay sa pananampalataya at biyaya ng Dios ay hindi matitisod at titigil sa paglilingkod. The very reason why you stop serving the Lord, you miss the grace of God. But if we live by grace, the more you became faithful. Alam mo po sa amin, we are entrusted with 300 mothers to teach uh, under DSWD. 300 mothers every month. Kaya kung ako ay mag- mga kandidato, ay, sorry, sorry. At ang butante ay nanay, panalo na ako. <laughs> Buti na lang basta nag-uusap na tayo, hindi na ba? Sis, sisimulan ko sana sa barangay Tano de. <laughs> yeah, alam niyo po mga minamahal. We also teaching in in PNP. So, but sometimes you know, uh, sometimes the the more you work hard but sometimes the outcome is not that good. Sometimes you are weakened and sometimes you want to stop. That's why I told to my wife, Mommy, let me go out for a while. When I go back, next month po, mag uh, February today, March is our first church anniversary. It's our first church anniversary. I, I even thinking of finishing the, the, the doors and the windows. But the most that I want is I want to work hard the more for the members. Nakakapagod din, Pastor, minsan. Uh, talagang, but... I know that I need to work more. It's 
we should not have an excuse. I believe we should just see the grace of God to our lives. Napakahalaga. The, the, the grace of God, understanding God's grace makes us faithful. But number three, one thing that we can notice on the verse, in verse number 10, growing in God's grace makes us humble. Apostle Paul said, yet not I. Whatever I can and you can accomplish in this life, it is not your work. It is the Lord's doing. And if it is not the Lord being glorified, what is the purpose of the ministry? Kung ang simbahan wala nang naliligtas, if the church doesn't any convert, doesn't any converts anymore, and if the church doesn't have believers sacrificing their lives in the ministry, the church is not a church anymore. That is the purpose. It's not. There's nothing wrong to have building, a good building, an air-conditioned building. Sa amin po hindi air-conditioned, air continuous, cakay air supply. But it's okay. It's okay. But one thing that we should be sure of is we should glorify the Lord. Let us not leave ourselves. Alam niyo po, ako'y naniniwala, the, 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 the thing that I really appreciate with Tatay Porto, I was remi reminded of him. I, I was a, one of that, his teaching staff in his Bible school. I never felt that I'm a, just a young pastor. He used to serve us with rice. And minsan nga, hindi ko naubos yung fish. Kinuha niya pa, saidin mo to, Pastor Alvin, pambigira ka sayang. And you know what? It's not for us to see. Sabi nga, we must esteem others better than ourselves. Let us be humble because the, our Lord is a humble, per, a humble God. Kaya po yung biyaya, kung nasa atin ang biyaya, dapat lalo tayong humble. And we are becoming more good stewards. Mga minamahal na, pag naalala ko yung mag-asawa, nag-aaway, talagang sabi niya, sawang sawa na ako. Hindi na kita matiis. Sabi ng babae, mas lalo na ako. Hindi na rin kita matiis. Lalayas na ako dito. Sabi ng lalaki, sabi ng babae, ako rin, lalayas na ako. Sasama na lang ako sa'yo. <laughs> Hindi rin sila nag-outing <laughs> nag lang yata yung mag-asawa. <laughs> Salamat sa Panginoon when we love each other. You know what, sometimes when I'm facing the foreigners, it restrains me to tell a joke. Kasi minsan atawa tayo, sila hindi. Okay, number three. Ito po, patapos na po ako, amen? Yung iba, biglang nare-revive. Last point. Amen. Yung iba, nag-hallelujah po eh. So, purihin ng Panginoon. The results of God's grace. In a very simple, probably you might understand more and deeper about grace. But allow me just to share what I... Uh, the Lord has given to us. Number one, because of God's grace, it provides our eternal salvation. Biyaya ng Diyos po ang maligtas. Dapat nating maunawaan that there was a person that I know that, that used to be said that he was a Christian, but the evidence was not there. Ah, I was reminded of the, the story of Dr. Jim Binney. He was talking to one of the American who has that doctorate uh, degree and he is an author of a book, New Testament uh, commentaries. And he was looking at that commentary. It was really good. And he was talking to that the old doctorate American pastor. And he said, oh, this is a good book. Uh, of course, the reason why you did this is because, uh, praise the Lord, you're a Christian. You're a saved person. And of course, uh, the, the, that doctorate degree said, uh, person is, of course, I'm saved. Hey, by the way, where did you get saved? Oh, I got saved when I was four years old. And Dr. Jim told him, oh, that's too early to be saved. By the way, how did you get saved? Ah, that was my mother told me that I am saved. Yeah. Can I tell you this? Normally, Christians as, are being instructed with many teachings and doctrines and beliefs. Normally, when you ask somebody, are you saved? And you will say, yes, I am saved. Why you are saved? And you, they will say, oh, because I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. That was a correct answer. But listen, that can be memorized. That can be memorized. Many people today, especially the victims in ACE, that they've been taught with the gospel but never experienced a real conversion in their lives. 
Kaya kaunti lang nag 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 babakslide na. Counting problema lang pag nakawala lalong grabe. Because salvation can be memorized, but you must have an experience of real salvation. If you study the life of Apostle Paul, and he was having that missionary journey, there was only a one statement whenever he shared the gospel, that when he was in the way of Damascus, and there was a light from heaven that shined in his face, and he heard a voice from heaven and said, Soul, soul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It's hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And he said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? A real saved person had that kind of experience. If you are saved, when is that? Whom do you talk to? What did you understand and what did you do? Did you really pray? I got saved when I was 13, 1991, December 20. I was at the back of the door of Palominos Baptist Church, having that person, Pastor Meliares, and explain to me the gospel. And I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And it seems like yesterday. It's still fresh in my mind. But then if you say you're saved, you must remember, are you really saved? It is God who knows that. But I hope you know too. Because you're the one that make that prayer. You are the one that received that message, the gospel. And the reason why many churches today are having so much problem because they are just members but they are not Christians. May I remind you of that. The grace of God gives us salvation. Number two, it molds us unto sanctification. Ang tunay na Kristiyano na babago, kapatid. Impossible. Impossible yung wala. Sabi ko sa inyo, I, I grew up in the streets. I used to fight. I used to... I courted many. When I was before I reached 16 years old, I already have 24 girlfriends because I have many puppy loves. I realized that puppy love is love of puppy. <laughs> but I praise and thank the Lord when I surrendered my life in one of the camp and I said to God, Lord, I'm going to give to you my life. From 16 years old, I proposed the. the the, the, last, the, the last and the first time again that I said I love you when I was 31, 30 years old to my wife. God changed me. Ako, nag, nagsisigarilyo din po ako nun, pastor. Nagiinom ako, tapos uso pa nun si Robby, nagtatali ako sa ulo ng, ng panyo, naglalagay ako ng banaid kahit walang sugat. Tapos, nagyuyosin na ako, sinubukan ko din yung bilog, yung bilog, sunod puso. A puso, star. Ay, hindi po, bilog lang nagawa ko. Pero wala naman yung mga star star na yan. But I praise and thank the Lord when I became a Christian, the Lord removed to me all those vices. And He changed me. And I started to love what God loves and hate what God hates. If you are a really Christian, there must be something that changed in your life. And if not, you better ask yourself. Number three, Number three, it develops our service and adoration. You came to church because you see God. You know what? Uh, there was a story that told me by Pastor Joel that there was a Korean that at, used to attend here and she never understand yet she keep on coming to the church. You know what? When you see through the pastors, through the preachers, through the services, God, you, you always have the desire to go to church. But whenever you see only man, what you can see is only the mistakes, not God anymore. So let us adore God. Let us live and put God to its position. He is our God. He is worthy to be praised and worshipped and glorified. And finally, it prepares our reward and glorification. Alam ko, kung hindi man ako yumaman dito sa lupa, kung hindi man, uh, when, when we traveled here going to to, from Thailand to to Cambodia, I only had one dollar and I think 400 baht. And I, I'm trying to buy a SIM card because our the person that we will pick us up is not coming yet, but my money is not not enough. Uh, I have I have a few peso there, but uh, I I have no baht. But one thing that I realize is. 
uh, even we don't have money but we have God always and one one day the satisfaction and the joy and our labor is not in vain may reward tayo dun sa langit kapatid uh, ako po kasi ano eh, I used to work alone I, I do not want that that uh, somebody was being uh, seen what I, I'm doing in fact my pastor never know sometimes what when uh, even when I was in in a full time ministry I used to have Bible studies seven Bible studies in a week but uh, one thing that I learned it's there's nothing wrong that somebody is at your back and tapping your shoulder and it's okay it's good there's nothing nung ako po yung nag full time worker we are required to go soul winning but we are not provided with a lunch kaya nung una ang hinahanap ko kaluluwa at saka papaya oh kasi pag nakakita kami ng papaya sa soul winning then we get that papaya then we buy sardines and then we can eat and we are happy doing soul winning but one thing that my encouragement our labor is not in vain Tuloy lang tayo kapatid. At minsan hindi sinasadya yung pastor natin. Ano eh, hindi tayo in-encourage. Pero one thing that I read one time, yung sabi sa Matthew 28 verse 20, that I will be with you always. Maring people might leave us, but God will never leave us nor forsake us. And I think my conclusion pa ako, now let us understand grace. We can never pay back for His goodness to our life. But we can thank, praise, and glorify His name through our faithfulness to our church. Let us live by grace, understand the great grace of God. Good morning, Paul, and God bless you.